Welcome back everyone to another let's make a mobile light game in Unity. Uh, so in the last one we were working on getting our uh, champion to actually start using stuff. So I'm just going to get rid of a couple of stuff right now just by removing them like this uh, and that one too. Um, so when I click play we'll see a couple different things. Uh, we'll see that we do have a Q on here, which means that one actually is an ability. We click Q, we give our, we get that kind of thing going on. Uh, maybe I want to increase that just a little bit. And if I click uh, my left click, he'll turn and fire uh, that cool spell as we see down here. Um, we see that the mana is also decreasing. If I right click over here, he'll run over here. And we can do the same kind of thing over here does get a little wonky um, moving around like that um, but it's one of the bugs that I have had before uh, right there um, and that's just not him trying to follow this um, it looks like it does affect the uh, health bar as well so it's one of the things that we will be have to work on eventually um, so let's go into um, a couple of the other things um, so I'm going to bring back this sort of stuff um, and actually, I'm just going to bring back one at a time. I'm going to bring back, I'm just going to bring this melee minion in. Um, default, we should be having a tag of enemy on these. Um, there will be a couple of different tags that we're going to be needing to create. First one is going to be enemy. Um, and we're going to be tagging um, all of our prefabs with the enemy tag. And then when they get spawned, on the same um, side as us, we'll be switching them over to ally um, so that we know, you know, which is an ally and which is a, um, an enemy. A um, couple of things that we want to do in here. Uh, do you have health yet? He does not. Let's give him just some basic health. Um... We can do the same thing for that. And the rest of the stuff we really don't need to worry about for right now. Um, this text, that we don't have to worry about. Um, the health, we haven't really gave them these yet. Um, but we can worry about that in a little bit. Um, actually, let's go right ahead and do that. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this canvas. Just going to do a duplicate with command or control D. I think it's Command D on Mac. Um, bring that into here. And I'm just going to set these so it's right over them. Um, and actually, just on the Z direction. So it's over that guy. Um, if I hit this again, we should see. Um, maybe not right there. Um, but that's one of the things I did want to look into. Um, I do want to move this down just a little bit. Uh, I'll go into the 2D mode so we can actually see this. Um, I'm just going to hide the champion for right now. Just so I can work on just what that looks like. Um, and inside this canvas, um, we don't need the name or the, or, or the level. We don't need the resource. And then all we have to do is just scale this part back down like that. Um, shift alt stretch. And then reposition them. something like this stretching this out um, how we want it to but we do have that scaling down so it does make it a lot bigger than what it should be um, now if we go into the game view um, a little bit better probably a little bit down a little bit more I'm gonna bring it down to about not on that canvas bring this down Go back over to the game view. That looks about right. If I hit play, should be looking up a little bit more. Um, we can do the same kind of thing so we can actually see it. There we go. 
Uh, we know that that is going to be our height that we need. So copy that and paste that into there. Cool. Um, where is this coming from now? Um, this is coming from base character. It could just mean that I don't have something set up. Name text is equal to character name. Oh, name text is just not um, displayed. Okay. Um, if name text uh, does not equal null, do that. That way we're at least displaying that. Um, when we have a name. And then the other thing we need is um, to set up the stuff in here. So image goes on to image and text goes on to text. Apply that, click on play. We should see 100 out of 100. Cool. Uh, no more errors down here because this name text is not worried about. Um, and we're not having to show the resource or the level. Um, Cause that's just how that went. Okay, so now that we have that, we can bring back our champion. And I'm just gonna alt click on melee minion just to collapse everything down. I'm also gonna throw the red and blue teams underneath. Um, and actually I'm gonna throw them into the hidden right in here. Okay, so. Now that we have that, we have to figure out that projectile that we made. Um, it has a script on it called projectile. And it should know exactly when it collides with something. Um, it has a function on here called on um, collision enter. So this is when it actually hits something. Um, we're, what we can do now is we can check um, if, and I'm going to just going to rename this to um, call, just because that's easier to write. If call dot um, game object, so this is what we're colliding with dot compare tag and we could put something in here um, um, you know we'll say and actually we should be doing this as a switch statement so I'm going to put a switch in front here and instead of compare tag I'm just going to put tag in here that seems a little bit better and then we could say something like um, ally we'll do this um, and these should really be constants uh, but we'll come to that in a little bit um, enemy and then last one we'll just say default And all we want to do here is just destroy the game object, which is right here. That's all we really want to do if it's anything but an ally or an enemy. Um, and this is another reason why we have this owner tag. Um, um, so the owner tag will be set as, right now it will be set to default since we ha really haven't given anything to the player. Um, if I go back over here, we'll see that champion has it as untagged. Um, this should really be set as ally. Um, that's just how that portion is gonna be coming in. Um, just gonna minimize some of the stuff so we can see this a little bit better. Um, so this should be said as um, ally as the tag. Um, 
And then the next thing that we need is we need to know um, before we actually check anything if um, this tag right here and we can actually use that um, compare tag um, if it's equal to the owner tag um, and the ability dot do I have a base damage yet? How do we know how much damage it's doing? It's like in spell. Anything in here yet? Nothing. So let's actually create that. Public. Um, we can use a float. Um, really int, because we want to work with whole numbers. Int base. Uh, damage. Um, so if the base damage is less than or equal to zero, we're just going to return right here. Uh, what this is meaning is, is that um, this collision shouldn't happen. Um, we are the same, the same tag, meaning we're hitting an ally with a negative damage. And a negative damage for us is actually gonna be damage, whereas a positive base damage is gonna be a heal. Um, so now, how do we get to this piece of code? Because um, right now that will never happen. Um, so really this should be in here. But now that will never happen. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna have to check for that kind of stuff in here. Um, maybe what I'm thinking won't actually happen since we are having them be separate anyways. Anyways, um, what we can do now is say, um, we're going to get the component that's actually on the collision. So collision that game object dot get component. And we're going to use um, the string method, which we can just type in uh, type of and we want type of um, I damageable. So we're going to get that um, and we're going to say component comp is equal to that. So we're getting that component right there. Uh, next, we're going to check if the component is true, meaning does it actually have something in here? Um, you know, did it find something of um, the I damageable type? Um, if it did, you know, now we can actually say. Um, comp as I damageable dot change health and we can say we did actually use float so I will change that back to float um, sometimes you can use floats in here just to make it easier uh, and I think that was because it's easier to change the health that way so we don't have to change stuff around um, and then we can just say ability dot base damage um, you know maybe a debug dot log in here actually the debug dot log um, should also be in if we go back to the base character where this is actually happening um, that debug should be right here and then we can say um, string dot format um, you know, player name ha um, has taken um, blank damage. 
And we just need the character name and the amount. Um, which this right here is actually going to get turned into um, combat text. If we actually wanted to put combat text in there, um, that's the location of where it will be. So now that's all set. I can click on play. I can click Q, aim it towards that minion, cast it, um, and write. The other thing that we needed to do was make sure on the projectile after we cast it, um, no matter what, we want to destroy the game object. So if it actually you know, did damage to him or not, we want to destroy that object. And it does have uh, zero as the damage because I haven't put anything there. There we go. Cool spell is casted. Blank has taken zero damage. Okay. So now all I have to do now is in there we can give it as that melee uh, minion. Give them at least a name. Under the spell slots, cool spell. We have that base damage, let's say negative 10. Okay. So we can click on play. And we'll see he lost 10 damage. Melee minion has taken negative 10 damage. Um, really, um, so that's a little bit of formatting in there. We could have, you know, has taken, you know, depending on if it was plus or minus. I'm just going to leave it in as that for now. Um, Because this is going to get removed anyways, eventually. Um, that's just for us to let us know that it's actually been taken. And it only happens once. And that's the key part. It's only happened once. Um, it didn't happen like multiple times or anything like that. Okay, so now that we actually have starting to do damage to them. Um, and if I were to do this a couple more times... And oh, it is at zero right now. Let me just give myself some more resource. Um, so now what's happening is, is that we are supposed to be subtracting the 10. But as you can see, nothing's really happening. Like, I can keep firing at this guy. We are seeing that we are getting that message that he has taken negative 10 damage. But nothing is happening. Um, now, why is that? Um, plus equals negative 10. That brings us down to zero. And our base stat is saying um, on current, on the set... Um, so this is going to say if zero is equal to zero. So that should actually be working. Um, I'm going to get rid of that equal sign there. Well, let's see if that had anything to do with it. And before I do anything like that, I'm going to give myself... I'm going to give the cost just to be zero, just to make it easier on myself so I don't have to keep fiddling with the, the uh, resource. So there's that. So he's going down, going down. That is all working correctly. And now here it is right here. We're at, we're at 10 right now. We're doing 10 damage. And still nothing is happening. We're taking that damage, but nothing is still happening. Um... You know, why is that? If 
I were to just get rid of that portion, just check the max. What does that allow? What what happens there? For some reason, I thought that when I clicked on him, when I did it that direction, I do see he's getting pushed a little bit, and I don't really want him to get pushed. Um, if I look at my rigid body, um, I can say that he's a trigger and then instead of using on collision enter I use on um, I'll use this one And then this becomes that. And that actually should solve what I was going to do anyways with that other check up here. You see, it's still working. But here's the part where it doesn't. Um, and it actually is working in here. Um, so we are seeing that it is at negative 10. If I do it again, it's gonna go down to negative 10. Um, so that means a couple things. First, we can come back in here, change all that back up. That was fine. Um, the second thing is that we never actually did anything in here. Um, so that way we never saw it actually getting update. That's why it's not calling update. Because we just want to destroy game object in here. So that was actually the whole reason, uh, the whole thing that it, what happened. Um, it was making sure that it was greater than zero. It was zero, so that had no effect. So then we're just skipping all this, and it's skipping this, excuse me, update stats. And update stats is when we were changing this. So once when that goes in, and we get that in, we'll see, totally just missed that. We go down. Here's the 10, I'm gonna do it one more time and he goes away. Awesome. Um, if now, um, if I were to say, uh, grab this guy right here, and I'm just gonna use a range minion, turn this guy on, um, Make them the, the same spot. It's not that one. Ranged. Not that one. That goes to zero. This comes out here. And then I can take him and move him back a little bit. Um, so now what we're going to see 
is absolutely nothing at the current moment. Uh, ranged. That's going to be tagged as ally. This is going to be 100 100, which is why he vanished. What we'll see now is I'll use it, I'll go through him, and I'll hit him. Do I want that? Um, and that's where a lot of it comes down to, do, you know, do I want to be able to pass through uh, uh, my own target? Um, in this case, I kind of do. Um, but we, we'll get into that kind of stuff later. Um, this guy doesn't have one of these one of these yet. Um, I'm just going to hide him again. Uh, the other stuff that we're going to be looking at is, is towers. So here's a tower. Um, and currently... You know, we'll, it'll be tagged as enemy. Um, so now my character, my champion over here, could actually target it with um, his cool spell and actually do, um, should do damage to it. Um, but right, the tower hasn't actually have anything on there. Um, so it really doesn't do anything yet. Um, but it will need a based character script on it which actually will probably be like base building. Um, but we really haven't gotten into buildings yet, so I'm just going to get rid of the buildings for now. Um, and we're just going to deal with the melee minion uh, for right now. Um, so as you can see, we're actually doing damage to our, our minions. Um, and I'm going to bring in another melee minion. Um, just going to duplicate this one and move him over here. Um, this guy over here is going to be one of our allies. So I'm just going to ch uh, change the tag over to ally. Um, I'm not going to hit apply on it because I do want it to be set as a um, as enemy to begin with. Because um, that would change both of them. Um, now the next sort of thing that we're going to have to start doing is getting the next sort of spell. Um, and then the next sort of spell is, I'm gonna hit another button, let's say W, um, and it should pick, it should give us a ring that comes out and another indicator to say, you know, over here. Um, you know, another circle or indicator to say over here. Um, so let's get that outer ring in first. Um, so we're gonna need to go back to our champion controller. I'm going to do control M, control O to bring that down again. Um, and we're going to need another game object. Um, and this is going to be um, I guess we'll call it a um Call it range indicator. Um, and this range indicator is going to be used for multiple different things. Um, you know, checking the range of like your auto attacks or um, really anything in there. Um, and an auto attack really is just going to be a spell um, that when we right click on an enemy, it's going to give us the auto attack. Um, cast time on it, which we'll do a little bit later. Um, bring game functions over here real quick. Um, so this range indicator, we're also going to need a public bool on range um, indicator. Um, and now this on range indicator, um, that will be, we'll put it right in with our, our other in update indicator. So we'll go down to update indicator. We have this one right here, um, which we want to do. So actually we're going to make another one. Um, I don't really want to put more than one in there. Uh, private void update 
range indicator. And we can say if on range indicator is uh, is false, we can write it like that, or we can just put the exclamation point in front of it, uh, which I'm just put up here. We're going to return. Um, so now this means that our range indicator is true. Um, so what we should be doing is setting our range indicator dot um, was it enabled set active set active to true. Um, inside of here, we want to do one other thing. We also want to set this to that to this. Um, let's put that up here. Put that in there. So that we can still do it that way. Because um, no matter what, we still want to be able to change this to whatever our indicator is saying it is. Um, and now that it's true, um, I have a better idea, actually. Um, we're going to go back into our spells. Um, be part of the spell system. Create a new C-sharp script called indicator and open that up um, again no my behavior uh, system dot serializable and no update or start function in here um, what I'm gonna be doing is a little bit of refactoring um, to get ready for uh, the next sort of um, Um, the next video. So I'll make these things public in here. Um, these should be turning red quite soon, actually. Um, this whole stuff, all of that really should be moved in here. And then inside of here, we need a public indicator Ugh. let me just do a refresh on that we'll see that we do have a problem I'm um, just reloading that solution because of what happened So now I can go back to here and say uh, indicator um, indicator system. Um, now we're going to see a couple other issues like this one right here. Um, and that's just because we need the indicator uh, system dot. We need that one there. We we'll also need the other update function that we created, update range indicator. Um, and we also need, I'm just going to copy this indicator system, this onto here where we're setting that current indicator. And I'm just going through checking the other stuff that we're going to need. And sorry about my phone going off. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Okay. Turn that off. Um, now we have a couple more things down here. Making sure these down here get it as well. And now if we go back into Unity, we will see no more problems in here. I go up to champion right into our character controller. We'll see uh, our indicator system. And we just need that spawn location again. So we drag that back in there. Everything else is the exact same. We can go back into unit or back into play on it. Um, mm -hmm. Right, because I just haven't added that um, the thing in here yet. If I were to put this into there, there we go. And everything else is still working. Uh, I believe that is a constant rotate speed. Bring that up to 20. Just make it going around a little bit quicker. Um, so what I need now is another prefab. Um, and it's very similar to our line projector. So I'm going to bring this in and call this the range indicator and then drag that into here as well. Um, I really should create another folder in here. Folder, um, actually I put it into the buildings, but I can change that in a second. And I'm just gonna call this targeting. Um, drag that out. Did it actually, oh, looked like it was in there. I need this one and this one into here. Okay, so this range indicator. Um, so instead of using um, this material, I'm gonna duplicate this one and change this one to um, indicator and this one to line indicator. Um, do I have a materials location yet? I don't think I do. Uh, no, go ahead and create one. Underscore materials, dragging this on the outside. Okay, and dragging the two indicators out and into the materials. Okay. Um, so on this one, instead of using the line indicator, we're going to use just a regular old indicator. Um, and I'm going to actually put the AOE in front of it. AOE. Um, and if I actually look at this indicator now, where are we? Um, first thing, let's just move it up here. Uh, right, um, so this one is still using the square where we need to use the circle. Okay, so now what we can say is on our projector, we can say um, we can change this orthographic size and we can get our, our range out. Um, if I put this back at You know, zero on here, we can say, okay, so now we actually know what our range is. Let's say 50. Um, so now we know that this guy is in that range. Um, I'm going to take this range indicator, throw that onto the champion, and uncheck it. Then I'm going to take that range indicator and throw that onto our range indicator and click apply. Um, so now when we click play, we're going to see a couple of different things. We're going to see, okay, that is there. And if I click the on range indicator, that shows up. Ignore the little side, uh, the little side effects on the sides. Um, I just haven't had time to um, change that yet. But now that we have that, 
um, we can tell a couple different things on this. Um, the first one being that if I click on here, this guy is in our circle, this guy is not. Um, so now what we want is to be able to spawn our additional one. Um, so that's our range indicator. I'm going to go into the prefabs again, targeting, duplicate our range indicator. And instead of calling it range indicator, I'm going to call it AOE indicator. Um, and now all I need to do is set a, um, a new spell in here. So I'll go to element one. Element one, um, let's see. Where is this getting the, right, icons in there. These are just the images. Um, as we're going to here, we'll say um, healing effect. We'll change this to a different one. We'll say zero. Uh, we'll say W. Um, we'll say 0.1 for the cooldown, and we'll say 10 on that. Uh, and then we're going to change this projectile to AOE. Um, and then dragging in the AOE indicator to the prefab, uh, to the indicator, and we'll create the um, the prefab for it in a little bit. Um, so that's what we're going to need in here. I'm just going to click apply on that. Um, and now what we need to do is in our champion controller, we'll see. Um, what we'll see is, right, it is in um, spell slot, cast spell, um, update timer, update that. Where are we actually instantiating the, um, right here. Right? So this is where we're actually spawning our indicator. Um, spawn indicator transform, and that's in our ability, which is right here. Okay. Um, so we really will need to know in here, I guess. Um, <laughs> this effect. So. Because um, this is going to work for this one, but it's not going to work for them all. Um, I guess we can say... No, because we don't want to actually want to tra uh, change anything by the X or Y of the range yet. Um, hmm. If effect is equal to AOE return, um, and return return go. So just instantiate it and return it. Because really, all the stuff down here is what we want for the other stuff. Um, for just line, not for the AOE. Um, for the AOE stuff,
update indicator, um, update range indicator. So what we need is a way of knowing how big the range indicator is going to be. Um, so that means that this part right here needs to, this right here is what, um, if we go into the ability again, this range is going to be. So I'm going to uncheck it and I'm going to say um, where it is located right now. So 50, um, 50 and one. And I want to look exactly at the line again to see where um, I did change that to one and one again. Um, and I wanted to remember what is each. Did I actually write it? I wrote it as width and length. Okay. Um, orthographic size aspect ratio. Okay. So the range one, orthographic size is 50. Expect, so X, Y. Um, so now I can say in my champion that this one is 150. Um, and then in my indicator, I can say something along the same lines as this. Um, but instead of saying go here, I'm going to want the range indicator. And instead of this here, um, I need to know which spell I'm currently using. Um, so I'm actually just going to put that in here. Public um, spell slot current spell. And then I can just say... Um, current spell dot ability dot range okay um so that should change us uh, the only thing I need to do now is when I get the um, the indicator um, and where do I actually set up the indicator targeting targeting normal right here um, so right here, I want to say, um, if slot dot ability dot effect is equal to this dot AOE, I will also want to say that the indicator system dot current spell is equal to slot. And slot we know is a spell slot. Um, so then we can say in here, um, and Spells, uh, current spot, current spell is equal to null. Um, so if either one of these happens, we're going to return out. If not, we can go right on and change up that. Um, so again, I'm going to go into our range indicator in here, set this back to one. And apply this. Uh, now, if I click on play, first thing we should see is the W. If I hit the W, we get the range indicator. Oh, and I'm also not 
training the on thing to be true. Um, so back into the champion controller, um, right in here, we're going to want to say indicator system is equal to be true. Um, oops. Dot on indicator range or on range indicator. Um, and then the other thing we need to do is mouse inputs. When we're doing all this stuff in here, we're also going to want to set this to false. So whenever we actually destroy it, you know, we're resetting it. Um, and really we're calling this a lot. Um, so this right here, I'm going to right click, create um, action, extract method. I'm going to call this um, reset spell slot. Um, and then I'll grab this function down here, bring this into game functions and place this in here. This becomes a public static. Um, we need a uh, indicator. Indicator system. And this becomes game object. Um, so then now in here, all we have to do is say game funks dot place this in here and remember to put in the um, indicator system. that's all we need to put that in there. Uh, we're calling it a lot and that's the reason why I did make that. Okay. So now, when we go ahead and we click on play, I hit the Q, Q still works. It's a little bit quicker. I hit the W, and we get something that actually doesn't look how it should be. And that is because I dragged it into here. This should be back to 111. I hit the W. I really do hate this portion because um, that's giving us a lot of, um, you know, a lot of actual things that making it not work. If I drag this into here, oh, now it's apply it, click on play. Oh, I got those. Um, two numbers mixed up. Um, this is 50. That is 1. So for some reason, it lighted the second time I did it. There we go. Uh, we're still not doing anything with this indicator, AOE indicator yet. Um, but if I actually go into here, 
and I move this over, we are seeing it. And that should be changed to the AOE. Um, I'm going to do that outside so it actually lines up properly. Um, there we go. Um, so now we just need to make it move with our mouse. Um, and again, that's going to be part of um, the update indicator in here. Um, right now it's doing the rotation towards it. Um, so now what we need to do is say if whoa uh, if current spell dot ability dot effect is equal to projectile we'll do this else we'll do this stuff down here um, and really All we really need to do is um, let's see. I wonder if I want to do the exact same sort of thing in here. Yes, I actually really do. Um, I'm going to create this as a new function here public static um, I'll do a void for right now and this is gonna be move oops I'm sorry about that uh, towards mouse with transform T so same sort of thing um, I'm actually gonna copy this entire thing um, comment out the return Coming out the results and remove that. Because um, now what I can say is I got our target point right here, and this is our vector. Um, Where am I using T? Oh, okay. Um, T dot position. Okay. Just making sure that I'm understanding exactly what I'm doing. Um, and then in, in here, I was saying that the indicator dot transform Returning in slurp towards it. Um, so then, if I can say the current indicator dot transform dot position is equal to um, Game funks dot move towards mouse current indicator dot transform. Um, so that means this needs to be a vector three um, vector three. Um, this instead of being a vector uh, instead of being that should be a, also a vector three um, this would be vector three dot zero and I still want to return the result um, and then 
Actually, I just want to return target point. Or in this case, results. This would just be t dot position. So it would just if um, if it doesn't hit anything, then it would just go back. Sure. I'm gonna see what happens with that now. So I hit W, and our AOE indicator is not moving. At least it's not looking like I'm moving. Or it is moving, I'm just not seeing it. It's way out here. Um, just to make sure everything is working, I am going to put in the projectile into that prefab slot. Okay. That's way out here. Uh, it should be down here. I do actually see it moving around. And it's probably over there because I just want like that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my indicator and I'm going to move it up to 10. I want to actually want to see what that looks like. Um, if I were to set this to 50 real quick again, and I'll set this to go up to five. So there it is. We actually do see it as right where our mouse is. Um, yes, it does go outside our range, but that actually does work, kind of. Um, our spell, or actually our projectile. Let's look at projectile real quick. Um, so that probably won't be correct. Um, um, so this right here is going to have to get changed up a little bit. And that's really if, um, ability dot range or ability dot effect is equal to line projectile do that else
Then we can say something like that. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so the only other thing we need to do now is when we actually cast them, uh, which would be under mouse inputs, um, right here, there's one other thing that we want to check. Um, we want to check this first, and if it's if it's false, then we don't want to go. Excuse me, into here. Um, and what that is is something else that we can put into here. Um, we'll say public bool um, check. Uh, distance um, bool results return results if um, indicator system dot check distance is true um, it is false return and I think I should be saying continue but it's on press sure um, and we should be saying this right here instead of that because we want to reset our um, our spell slot. Okay. Um, so let's actually create this check distance. Um, this check distance is equal to um, false. Just gotta make sure we're assigning it. Um, so now we have our current spell. We have um, so we know how far it can go out that y distance um, right here, or the orthographic the x distance. Um, so then and we also have our our current indicator. Um, so now what we can say is we're going to need to do another um, distance checked, which I had one right in here. Um, so I'm just going to grab that. Um, and we, ha we need to have two um, vectors is what we need. Um, the first one will be the current indicator dot transform dot position and the second one is um, Vector three does zero. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna just put in the range indicator. Dot transform. Dot position. Um, I'm also going to do a debug. Dot draw line. Um, between these two positions as well. color dot blue um, and actually I'm gonna 
I'm going to copy that real quick, um, cut it out, and I'm going to say if distance is less than or equal to the ability, the current spell dot ability dot range dot um, dot x let's do that else let's do this so what this is doing right now is given this one right here it's going to change this line between red and blue uh, we're still not doing anything with results yet um, false we reset it true we cast it and that should work either way um, so what we should see is a line going from our character to wherever our indicator is, is pointed to. Um, and here we won't see anything, but if I were to pause it, bring this out, I'm going to move the screen over to here real quick. Obviously that's going to look terrible. I'm not really seeing that line at all. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my game view over to another screen. Just so I have, oops, that goes over here and actually right down here. Do, do, do. Nope. Jeez. Over on that side, Fuck you and that's gonna be on this side. Oh, geez, normal. I am sorry about this. Game view over to this side, maximize. Um, Y view, play, W, so I'm actually not seeing that draw line. Check distance is getting called. Um, let's see. Debug dot log distance. And that is why um, that debug that I just put in isn't being called at all. Oh, and that's because it's when I do the left click. 67. Okay. Um, 
So that was 67. Um, I'll actually do a couple little tests real quick. So right here is outside 58. That's correct. This side of it is 41, which is actually true. Okay. So yeah, that is actually going correctly. Uh, this line is just not getting shown because it is when I'm clicking. Um, so now all I really have to do is just call um, just call that. A lot more than I actually wanted to do. Um, that's all I should have to call. And what we can see is, I'm gonna bring the game view back over. Click on play. I'll click on this side, you see it goes off. I click up here, nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens. I click inside and I'm gonna get really close to that line and it still works. Um, that is still not going as far as I want it to yet. So let me look at the projectile again. Um, so this should be 50 plus 10, 60. Why not? Um, I will actually look into that in a little bit to see exactly how that's going to work. Um, really, it's going to be a, a AOE projectile or an AOE prefab in here instead of this projectile. So I don't think I'll actually have to worry about it right at this time. Um, but that's going to be it for this video. We did a couple work on damaging. I'm not allowed to damage enemies. Um, that projectile will go through um, allies. Um we did a little bit of work on our indicators to making sure that that shows up correctly. Um, in the next one, we're going to further on this one be able to heal this guy over here, our heal our ally. Um, and I think that's about it. Um, and as again. Um, if you like the content, um, please subscribe to the channel. And I also do um, streaming on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the same uh, skater 135 um, And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.